What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Magic Dads podcast here on the Old Cranky Man Collectibles channel. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification button. So subscribe. We get to annoy you every time we upload a video. That's free. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please make sure you follow the podcast. There is a link to our Patreon campaign down in the description. You can head on over there, check out all of our extra content. And now that that is out of the way, me and my friend Stefan can get rolling here. So uh, it's been a while. We took, yeah. We took last week off for Father's Day. Happy Dad. Father's Day. Happy Dad Day. Happy Dad Day. Happy Dad. Happy Dad Day to everybody. Yep. <laughs> how, how, was your, how was your dad day? It was really good. Uh, I cooked and I we had... Erica's birthday, my wife's birthday was last week too. So we just had like some people over and some family and and uh, had some dinner and just hung out for a little while. So we had a barbecue at my parents' house. Let me tell you about this thing that my dad made. Oh, so right. he's like, he's like, uh, the shotgun shells might be done. And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Thinking he was talking about like an actual shotgun shell. No. So it is a, it's a manicotti, you know, one of those giant noodles Sure. Stuffed with Italian sausage, wrapped in bacon, okay, and then the whole thing is smoked with a barbecue glaze on it. That sounds oh, amazing. Oh man, it was divine. I ate so many of those things. I've never had a smoked noodle before. So was it? It's cooked before, right? Like yeah. So the pre pre cook the manicotti, stuff it, wrap it with bacon, but sure. then like the, it 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 wasn't like. The whole time I was thinking like, this is either going to be a crunchy noodle or a very, very overcooked noodle. And it's not going to be, it was not, it was al dente. Really? It was al dente, man. It was al dente. The, the bacon, the fat from the bacon and, and the barbecue glaze, like, like locked it all in there. And mm, I could eat a hundred more of those things. Don't. Easy You'll die. Easy. Uh, I probably <laughs> won't die. <laughs> Lay it, not, die not right away anyway. <laughs> just put a timer on it. So we're going to uh-huh. do, we're going to do something a little, a little fun today for the podcast. We're yeah. going to talk about the three best planeswalkers in Canadian Highlander, but first yeah. some honorable mentions. Yeah. This uh, guy, so this, sorry, go oh, ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, this is actually sort of, uh, we were playing commander the other night and this sort of came up because somebody mentioned there was a planeswalker that was, they're one of their top five planeswalkers. Right. And, and you, you, and I, you disagreed. Yes. And then, we got in, and then we got into a lengthy discussion about yeah. plane, planeswalkers in general. And then we started categorizing them. And then we're like, well, we should just do a whole video on this. So yeah. Uh, first up on the list, someone that I know you are very fond of. It is Grist, the hunger tide. Grist is the best creature that you can that you can uh, court of calling for. Uh, so Gr- Grist is one of the cards that sort of has uh, is weird. It's like it's probably the weirdest. It is very weird because when it's not in play, it's also a creature. It's mm-hmm. also a one one creature. So it has a defined power and toughness, mm-hmm. and it has a creature type. It's an insect mm-hmm. um, in addition to its other. So it's a creature insect. I believe when it's not in play, it's a legendary creature planeswalker insect grist is its full type line. And it also has power toughness one one. Um, what this means is that if there is any kind of card that lets you search for a creature yes, um, with a defined power and toughness or a mana mm-hmm. cost, um, you any, can any you of, can go get you can go get grist with imperial recruiter. Bingo. It also, all right. So here's the weirdness of the rules: is that while it is a creature on the stack, it isn't a creature. So so it's a creature while, while in hand, while in the stack, while in the graveyard, which means that they can't force a negation it. Yes, because it's it's a creature, mm-hmm. uh, and it also gets through effects like hallowed moonlight. Mm-hmm. This is weird because mm-hmm. so effects like hallowed moonlight effects like, um, uh, what's the two mana creature with flash that stops things from coming into play? Uh, uh, containment priest. Containment priest. Exactly. So it gets, a, it, it gets around that mm-hmm. because uh, Matt Tabak made the ruling that when it's coming into play from a, from a place other than your, your hand, it checks as it enters Mm -hmm. rather than on the stack. And Mm -hmm. so as it enters, it suddenly stops being a creature. Yes. 
and it goes, okay, it's good. You're good. You're fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so in modern, we've seen this like with Court of Calling, where if they if they flash in, if they play like Hell of Moonlight, um, where your Court of Calling X three, you can you go get go, rest. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it also has super relevant abilities. You can um, you can reanimate a grist. Uh huh. Yeah, you can you can reanimate it. You cannot do an animate dead. It'll fall off immediately and die again. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but you can you can do a reanimate. You mm-hmm. can. Uh, Birthing pod? Unear- you can unearth it. Mm-hmm. You can birthing pod into it. You can survive Neoform. the fittest into it. Mm-hmm. Neoform, exactly. Anything that would let you get a creature, um, it just, it, it's perfect. It's kind um, of shocking that Grist isn't in the top three, but this is this is, this is is some tough competition. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Basically, any deck that, that wants a, that is in green and black, any deck that's in green and black should probably be playing this card. Because it's a clean answer, like it it powers its own minus two to kill a creature or planeswalker, so it can just straight murk something across the board, a creature or planeswalker, mm-hmm. or it fills the fills your graveyard and makes bodies to defend it, which is the most annoying mode in the world. Mm-hmm. And then the minus five generally can just kill your opponent. It right like this this comes down, and if it gets to live for a couple of turns, you could just kill them with it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when you say a couple. Literally two. Yes. Two turns. Mm-hmm. It's it's so good. Yeah. It doesn't it's it doesn't it doesn't target. It just says each mm-hmm. opponent loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Yeah. So uh we yeah, we saw we saw Luke use the minus five to take somebody out in the Mont tournament. Yeah. It was uh, he was playing against Mill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His opponent milled him down, and then he was like, excellent, grist, and I think he plus one did he milled another grist so he got to do it again mm-hmm. so it took it to five immediately and then the next turn he got to minus five it it died went to his graveyard counted as a creature in his <laughs> graveyard and then hit his opponent for lethal absolutely incredible it, it was such a cool play um yeah play the card if you're in green and black generally i i don't see a reason to not play it so another okay. another one that you really like and you respect way more than I do <laughs> is is three mana Teferi. Teferi so Time Raveler. Time Raveler, yeah. This is the one out of War of the Spark. Um pr- debatably one of the best planeswalkers in that set. Well there's a ton of planeswalkers. So the thing about Teferi Time Raveler is is that uh there is no reason why this t- this static ability should be printed on a three mana permanent. Previously, right. previously, before three fairy got printed, this text was only seen on five mana plus cards. Not mm-hmm. only that, but he's also a planeswalker. He protects himself really yes. well. When he comes down, he gets to bounce something and you draw a card. And yeah, then, worst case scenario, even exchange. Right. Well, and then they have to attack him dead because he still has a loyalty left over after that. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but in specifically in blue mirror matches where you're playing this Mm -hmm. long grindy game that's, you know, you're both posturing, you're both filtering your hand a whole bunch. You just turn off your opponent's ability to interact with the stack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. So, so you get to force through any of your spells and you get to counter their spells and they don't get any idea to say anything about it. Yeah, there's there's literally nothing that they can do about it, which mm-hmm. is the most absurd thing. Because it, it doesn't just limit them to playing cards on their turn. It's at sorcery speed. Right. Yes. Your turn, my turn, everybody's turn, it doesn't matter. You yeah. don't get to play instance anymore. There are some lock pieces with Teferi that I think are really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, um, and, and this is probably not the best, um, but there are some enchantments that basically let you play things at, like require you to cast it in instant speed. Right. So this plus um what it, what is that card called? Um Possibility Storm. Yeah, Possibility Storm. This plus knowledge pool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, y- your opponents can't can't play spells for the rest of the game, sorry. Yeah. Because um Yeah, that's the conceit button. Because of the way that works. Not only that, but it also turns off things like Cascade. Yes. Correct. Uh, it turns off Aetherworks Marvel. Yep. Cuz um, the, the abilities on the stack. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's not just instance, it's things at instant speed. 
So mm. you cannot use the stack at instant speed. You can only use the stack when the stack is empty and you have priority. It's, for, for casting I, spells, I guess. You can still activate abilities yeah. at instant speed. You can still, yeah, exactly. There's still some play around it. Like you can, um, what's it? Uh, Arts, the Grimlock the, answer it. Cards bananas. I play so much aggro though that like, to me, it's always right. come down into like this small road bo- block. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, it sort of shows how little blue I play because I'm just like, oh, whatever. It's a fine card, I guess. Like, I don't care. I'm gonna kill it. <laughs> but, a, but a blue player looks at that card and sees their death. <laughs> yeah, like, no, for the, real. It's, I mean, it's basically like true name nemesis. If you don't answer this thing right now, you don't get to answer it. Period. Yeah. It, it does require the right matchup to be really good. So, you know, probably never going to see a point. Um, and, and not in our top three because of that. Like, it doesn't go in every blue. Eh, it probably goes in every blue-white deck. Well, like I said, it's some tough competition. So, yeah, yeah. The next card on the list of honorable mentions is Narset Parter of Veils. So yeah. this is this is in this, you know, scope of, of Notion Thief style effects, right? Mm-hmm. Your opponent cannot draw... Uh, more than one card a turn. Yep. So um, there are a lot of cards that do this. There's Hole Breacher, uh, like I said, Notion Thief. Uh, there's the new Orcish Bowmasters that that basically punishes your opponent for trying to draw multiple cards in the same turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Narset just says, nope. Yeah. What's better than punishment? It's just disallowing. <laughs> just disallowing it, yeah. I, I would rather than not draw those cards in, entirely. So Hole Breacher, um, you know, it's got Flash, right? It's a creature that can attack. Also, mm-hmm. um, you know, you get to make treasure tokens, w- you know, when they mm-hmm. draw those cards. Narset comes down and she immediately replaces herself in your hand, unless unless you're unlucky. Mm-hmm. She comes down and she gets to look at the top four cards and put a non-creature spell into your hand. If you're, if you're playing this card, you're hitting something because you're digging four deep, right? Well, so, I sure hope so. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say that I've never missed on a Narset minus, but... It's but the the funny thing is it's not a it's not an instant or sorcery it's just a non creature non creature spell mm-hmm. so it it's it can hit a battle now it can hit instant <laughs> sorceries enchantments planeswalkers and that's exactly it that's what I was getting at <laughs> it's like it refuels you for future turns and if you're in a deck that really aims to utilize this mm-hmm. um, you would perf like. Oftentimes the play patterns that I've seen is like a control controlling board, controlling board. You play this, you tick it down, replace it. The next turn you tick it down, leave it on one, and then it just sits there. It just sits there. And, and like, they never resolve you, a spell. You don't get a you don't get a draw any more extra cards. Sorry. Yeah. And uh a lot of times I've seen this in conjunction with like um universal draw effects like Lauren of the Third Path. Oh yes. Or or uh, even even more ruthless is the uh, the what is that the echo, asylum echo of eons. Uh, oh, eons uh, also. Uh, uh, um, I know what you're talking about. Greer, Greer yeah. Sanitarium. Right. Yeah, where so the player draws you, a card, discards you, a card. You discard a card. I draw a card, discard a card. Correct. <laughs> yeah, because you played on your opponent's turn after they've drawn their first card, uh-huh. and you're like, okay, yeah, cool, excellent. It it's sort of demoralizing. The the deck sort of. Those kind of decks that play this card, the control decks that play this card, I don't even know if it's a control deck. Like, even if you're putting them off drawing extra cards for a couple turns, mm-hmm. that's totally fine. Yeah, once again, where when you're when in a blue mirror match, when your entire strategy is to sculpt the best hand possible, you do that by playing all of these cantrips and drawing all these extra mm-hmm. cards and 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 you know looking looking you know messing around with the top of your deck and stuff like that. She just turns all of that off. So yeah. she says she says you have to kill me before you can do anything else. And what happens a lot of the times is like you just interrupt their game plan mm-hmm. because it's not like it's not like uh, they mess around for a turn or two and then they start going. It's like. Uh, they mess around, they, they do a thing, they mess around some more, they do a thing, they mess around some more. Like it's, it's a thing that blue decks do throughout the entire course of the game. And she just says, nope, answer me, or you don't, you, you don't get to do anything. One of the interesting things about Narset, and this comes up a couple times with these best planeswalkers is once they land on the board, it creates a sub game Mm -hmm. where this card has to be dealt with before you can move forward. And a lot of times 
if if, if you're landing the card, you've already won the sub game. Mm-hmm. You already know what's happening. Mm-hmm. And and blue decks have the ability, like you said, like they're gonna do some things in posture, and you're gonna wait until the right minute to play this. Mm-hmm. Like if <laughs> if you know that they're tutoring for like uh for their ancestral recall, mm-hmm. you go okay okay now I play it mm-hmm. because they wouldn't have tutored for it otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Any other honorable mentions before we get into the top three? Uh, I do want to talk about two cards. Well, one is sort of a dishonorable mention. This card has come up oh. a couple of times. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Comet, unfortunately, um, some some people love this card. Dishonored. <laughs> I think he's okay. Everybody, um, everybody and their dog is putting a Comet into their deck now. And I would yeah. like to tell you all to please stop. The card is not good. Yeah. Do you know what survivor's bias is? <laughs> we really need a psychologist on the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, yeah. So the the times that this card is insane, it is all random, like fully random. All, all the modes the, are, all all are okay. Um, but every you're always getting a random result. And there are s- situations where you can roll a few sixes and get to resolve a couple different modes of this card, mm-hmm. right? Um, and those, uh, weirdly, uh, the human brain is going to attach themselves to that. Mm-hmm. They're going to remember the times that the card was nuts. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go, best card ever, I'm playing this forever. Um, <laughs> and that's survivor bias, bias, because the times that you play it, it comes down, it makes a couple uh, tokens, and then it dies immediately you're not going to remember that. It yes. was an uneventful card. Yeah. Yeah, there are so many other four mana cards that you could be playing that like immediately win you the game when you get them into play. Mm. Please stop. He's not yeah, good. The- if you want to play a Comet, go play a game of Commander. <laughs> enjoy enjoy the best dog in the multiverse. Please, like the card is very fun. I, I will mm. give you that. Like the card is a riot. Absolutely. It and, is. And like you said, all of the modes of this card are pretty good. Mm-hmm. The issue is that you don't get to choose them. It is completely left up to fate. And yeah. it's not like you can roll the wrong number at the wrong time and something bad happens. It's not that bad. It's just no. the for four mana, you should be ending the game. Not yeah. making two one ones with haste. You know, you know what else not, is not the exact lob, same mana cost? Not lava axing your opponent. Yeah. the For the exact same mana cost, you could be playing Wynota Join Your Forces. Hey! And, <laughs> and that card often does win you the game immediately. <laughs> I guess if you I mean, if you build your deck around her, yeah, sure. Not, not even. Not even. I, I do not believe you need to construct your deck to fully take advantage of this card. It digs well, so deep and so well. If you don't have any humans in your deck, you're going to have to make some concessions. Find me a deck with no humans. Come on. So you're looking at, you're looking at, you look at seven cards with her, right? Six. You look six at feet. six cards on with her. On each trigger. On each trigger. So, so if you attack with three non-humans... You look at 18 cards. So yes. per per trigger, you need to have uh, one, 1. 1.75 humans in your deck. Sure. To see one out of the top six cards. Yeah. So in your in your 100 card deck, you need to have 18 humans to make sure it, that w- you see one every time she triggers. I think you don't even need to see one every time she triggers. I think if you see one every third time she triggers, you're just getting it. Like, cause, cause she doesn't have to attack. You just have to land her and attack with a non, a non, hey, a non-human. We're talking about planeswalkers today. You know, you know, it's a really right, good okay. planeswalker that you could play okay. instead of a Johnny, uh, blah, instead of Comet, you could play a Johnny what? Vengeant. That card also very good. A Johnny Vengeant slaps. That. slaps. A Johnny that Vengeant card is slaps. So good. He comes down, he taps your opponent's creatures. Oh, that's too bad. Or he may, he makes sure that your opponent's creatures can't untap. Oh, that's too bad. He comes down, he lightning helix is something, he lightning helix is something again, and he's a one-sided Armageddon on his ultimate. Oh, yeah. That card is I, I bananas. Will, I will pay that play that card knowing it will die just to lightning helix. Like, so many times I've played that card and just been like, okay, I know I'm getting one lightning helix on it, and it's absorbing an attack. And I'm fine with that exchange. 
sometimes it's Richard and Port that I don't have to pay mana for. <laughs> I oh dude, I have ported the I have ported people into the dirt with a Johnny Benjamin before. Because like Our... yes, you, you can <laughs> tap down their creatures, or deny them uh, resources. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't tap them. He just says you can't it untap. Right, but th they're tapping their. We're playing Canadian Highlander. They're tapping their lands. <laughs> It's only creatures. People are tapping out. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's any oh it's it's, it's permanent, it doesn't untap. Oh, I thought it was only creatures. No, dude. I have <laughs> I have Richard ported people so many times. Like I've I've been like, okay, cool, play this. Your land doesn't untap on your turn. Denied the mana. Like Oh it's man, I love it. You said there was another dishonorable mention? Uh so this is less of a dishonorable mention, sort of something that's fallen into some some amount of non-play and that's Liliana the Last Hope. Oh, okay. Um, as, as the format gets more and more hostile to, towards one toughness creatures um, with stuff like Fury mm -hmm. and Pyrokinesis mm -hmm. um, and like even just like Fork Bolt Effects, mm -hmm. um, we've been seeing less and less of them played and consequently Liliana the Last Hope is getting less and less powerful. So I think the only time... And we're talking about like before before the days of initiative, like back mm -hmm. in back in the good old days. I think the only time that I've ever seen Liliana Last Hope uh, is in Serge Serge Yeager's uh, uh, Sultai Lands deck. Uh, I I've seen him there. I also think Josh was playing Last Hope in Mardu. Oh, for a while. okay, yeah. Um, and it was it's a really good value creature against mm -hmm. like decks playing a lot of mana dorks. So Liliana Last Hope is great um, if your opponent yeah. have lots of X ones. Mm -hmm. um, like she kills the crap out of Ragavan. She kills mm -hmm. all of the mana dorks. Um, she kills Thalia Her Heretic Cathar. She kills mm -hmm. Snapcaster Mage. Um, I mean, there's plenty of stuff that she can take out. It's just like... I mean, it's basically like... Uh, Three three mana uh, deal one damage to anything is basically what she is, yeah. and it's just like not yeah. very good on rate. Even if you get to mm -hmm. do it like multiple times, she does have like this ability to kind of like pseudo fog your opponent if you're if you're mm -hmm. at parity or like just a little bit behind. They only have like one creature in play. Sure, um, you can you know make that creature smaller and you know let yourself live a little bit longer. But that does work really well if if you have like the initiative or the monarch because it helps you defend that. Fair. Um, but, and I'm not saying it's bad or don't play it. It's just really kind of fallen out of favor. Yeah. But, I mean, for three mana, you can do a lot better. Mm. And going back to Ragavan, like, yes, she kills Ragavan. Um, Ragavan also has dash. And so... Uh, right, like Ragavan, comes down Ragavan first, can kill her. <laughs> yeah. If she comes down first, Ragavan has the upper hand. But, like, it, it's just whoever played first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anything else you wanted to cover before we go into the top three? Let's get into the top three. So okay. drum roll, please. <laughs> Number three is Ren and Six. Yeah. Cards absolutely insane. Sort of uh, everybody kind of estimated that this card would be good when it was first previewed in Modern Horizons 1. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was immediately $100. <laughs> oh, the card is absolutely insane. Um, yeah like it coming down and then you get to just keep making your land drops lets you keep mm. some like questionable hands mm -hmm. um, just because you know that you're going to, you're going to be able to keep making your land drops no matter what with fetch lands. Yep. Um, the like this card is banned in legacy because wasteland exists. And for good reason. Yeah. That's it. It should not be in a, in a format where you get to play four wastelands. No. That, and and also, um, you know, kind of like Liliana of the Veil, it kills everything that has one toughness. And for cheaper. Yes, and for cheaper. Yeah, it, and and it can go dome. Mm -hmm. So you can you can minus one to hit your opponent for the last point of damage. Hey, that um, happened to me one time. <laughs> I almost did it to Cole the other day. He countered it. Uh, but yeah, that's the, the, the ability to go dome. And then the ultimate is just game winning. Right, like yeah, all you need is, like, a, is a it, lightning bolt. It's there. it's real hard to beat, you know, everything in your graveyard having retrace. Yeah, out the, the card's absurd. Outstanding card. Can't beat the price. Two two mana. No, and it's it's been reprinted now, so it's like monetarily, it's it's on the it's on the the down 
the downside. Oh, it looks like yeah. pick, you, pick it up now. It looks pick like it you now. can get one for about forty bucks from Card King. Correct. Game. Yeah, the, do it now if you if you need them. Buy them now. Buy a full playset of them if you mm -hmm. ever feel like playing modern and you ever have the inkling to play red green, red green X. Just yeah. get them now. Yeah, it, the card's always going to be good. And number two on the list is Minskin Boo. Another and card in red and green. Minsk, yeah, I mean, we're giving Gruel all the love today. Oh, yeah. So Minsk and Boo, uh, a new addition from uh, the Commander, the Commander Legends, uh, Batters mm -hmm. for, Batters, Battle for, Battle Baldur's, for Gate. Baldur's Gate. Yeah. This, this card, I think, uh, man, between this and number one, it is like very, very close. I think this card has the ability to turn a game around even more than the number one card. Uh, so, like, it comes down, it makes mm -hmm. it makes boo, you turn boo into mm -hmm. a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, you, you that's, crack, that's base. You crack in for four. Yeah, because he has haste. Your opponent says 16. Okay, mm -hmm. you untap, you crack in for four again, your opponent's at 12, and then you sack the boo to deal them four damage. Your opponent is now at eight. And you draw... Four cards. You draw four cards. In two turns, this four mana Planeswalker deals 12 damage. And and replaces himself four times over. Absolutely insane. And then you just get to make the boo token again on your next turn. Yeah. Yeah, you, you never don't have a creature. The creature always has trample and haste. Yeah. Um, also, it doesn't just go to face. When you sack it, you can deal four damage to a creature. Yeah. Or a Planeswalker. Or a battle. Yeah. You can flip a battle with this. Nuts. Insane. This card is outrageous. Um, there is so it, it only has two. It only has two activated abilities. Has mm -hmm. one one static, one one two activated, or one triggered, two activated. That's all it needs. There's no ult. Um, this is one of the few, I think, only planeswalkers where you can cast it, and this is sort of the the downside where you can cast it and not activate one of its one of its abilities. Because when you cast it, it enters the battlefield. Listen, this is weird. When it enters the battlefield, there is a trigger to make the boo token. Your oh, okay. I see what you're saying. And yes. Kill it. Mm -hmm. In every other planeswalker, if they don't respond to the, the cast, right. if they don't come down and you have priority again. Yeah, if they don't counter it, you immediately get to use it. This one there yeah. puts a trigger on the stack where uh, now they have an opportunity to kill it before you actually get to uh, cash in on your investment. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I never actually thought about that before. I saw it happen once. <laughs> Yikes! And it was it was Ryan. He did it to he did it to yeah. I to mean, Josh. A, a bolt a bolt kills this thing before it gets Correct. to before it gets to do anything. That's wild. Yeah, it it's sort of like the downside of the card. Um, in all other respects, uh, the card is uh, cracked in half. Most definitely. It, it, it's absurd. Like, even if it didn't make Boo as a token, it'd be like, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's it's okay. I get it. You put it in your Minsk and Boo commander deck, your three-color Minsk and Boo commander deck. Uh, no, it's it's absurd. It's, it's r ridiculous. <laughs> it's also funny to me that it says, uh, if the sacrifice creature was a hamster, draw X cards. Like... First of all, there are no other hamsters other than Boo. Boo uh, is, excuse me. Boo is the only hamster, except for like, um, uh, what do you call it? The shapeshifters. Ch changelings. The changelings. <laughs> yeah, they, thank you. Yeah, put some respect on their name. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the changelings are, are hamsters as well. So like, I don't know if you're playing any of them. Like, what's the blue-white one? The, the Mariner? Oh, yeah. Unsettled Mariner. Yeah. I'm the subtle mariner. That one's pretty okay. What about what about deck. Chameleon Colossus? Don't play that card. Don't what? That card. Have you ever cast a Chameleon Colossus? I, I have before? in Commander. What about a Mirror Entity? Uh, does that have Changeling on it? Huh? Mirror Entity is oh. the one that says you can pay X and then all your creatures become XX. Oh, that one's funny. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Everything's hamsters, and like you play both of the both of the minsk cards that make booze um funny enough the two booze that are made are the same token yes so you cannot have both of them yeah the, you, you can't don't, have beloved ranger you don't get a you don't get to have two boo tokens sorry yeah 
you don't get Minsk Beloved Ranger plus Boo, and then also, like, the legend rule themselves. It's like, what a ridiculous thing. You can have two Minskes, Minskes, but not two Boos. But boos. not two Boos, absolutely. Never. Wild. <laughs> so the, the, the number one Planeswalker, it feels a little obvious. Oh, um, well, okay, like, well, I mean, feel free to guess. Now, here, we'll give you yeah. a chance. We'll give you a chance to guess. And... <laughs> It's Oko. <laughs> it's Oko. He's a crown. Uh, the card that is banned in four formats? I mean, he was, he was banned in standard, so. Legacy. Yeah, so four formats it was banned out of. Uh, and and rightly so. I think um, he's the most banned card. Isn't he the most banned card? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, it, it was it was Luris. For a short amount of time, there were oh tied. yeah because okay. Morris was banned in vintage. Vintage, the it only card, the only vintage. card ever banned in vintage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it it's it's now unbanned, but yeah, for for a brief moment of time, have, being banned in four formats is actually kind of a is actually kind of a feat. It's a right? weird like, it's a weird flex, huh? Yeah, like banned <laughs> in four formats. Come play it. It's it's zero points here. Um, Oko is is crazy. And it's just no matter what, every time I see this card, I'm like, I'm like, how is this card? OK, he yeah. he's three mana and it immediately goes up to six loyalty. And all of his like his the, the two modes that are generally played, the, the plus two and the plus one are both pluses. Mm -hmm. No downside. Like, You're just going to no. keep taking his loyalty up. And like they it removes abilities from creatures. Mm hmm. So like none of your creatures that have abilities that are relevant, like Let's turn those off. Yeah. So su suddenly your flyers are no good. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> like it, it gains an <laughs> ungodly amount of life. And what's so we talked about like the sub game thing, right? Ogo uh -huh. is its own sub game uh -huh. <laughs> where your opponent can do nothing but tick it up and make food and gain life, and oh. you're actively priced into attacking Oko yes because he, he he turns out a 3-3 three, three every turn yeah. and there's the omnipresent ability for him to like but you don't need food you can turn your arkham's astrolabe or your soul ring or your black lotus into a 3-3 three, three and just get mm -hmm. some like yeah oh why does he have so much loyalty yeah that's the problem i don't think his i don't think oko as a card is bad I his, think abilities, his abilities his fine. abilities are not the problem <laughs> His no. loyalty is problematic. That's the problem. It's <laughs> always been the problem. If it, if he if his plus two was a plus one, his plus one was a minus one, mm -hmm. then this card would would not have been banned anywhere because mm -hmm. it dies immediately. Like it comes down, it makes a three th makes your creature into a three three. Then it has three loyalty and it dies to that three three. Mm -hmm. And like yeah, it mercs a three three. Like it mercs one of your creatures for a turn, turns it into a three three. Um, but then they get to kill it when they attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they get a 3-3. Three, three. And you don't get to, you know, you don't get to make the 3-3 three, three every turn and continue increasing Right, like a, essentially, essentially it would just be a beast within. Correct. And I think that's fine. I think mm -hmm. the problem is that this card was just so pushed. This was at the beginning of fire design. It's not even, it's not even pushed. Like you said, the abilities aren't the powerful part. It's the loyalty. Yeah. Like, who did the math on this thing? <laughs> It, it honestly feels like a typo. It's it reminds me of the uh, the uh, the monarch skull token. <laughs> that too. The actual literal. I was thinking more like skull clamp, where they were like, "Oh, just you, we don't want to make it too busted. Make it plus one, minus one, and print it. Don't te don't test this. You know what I mean? Like they were like, "Oh, we just want it to be good and not die. So oh, make it a and plus two and a plus one. Isn't it? Isn't it supposed to be uh, plus two plus zero? Isn't uh, it was supposed, supposed to be, to be plus one plus one. I think. Oh. And they were like, oh, that's too good. We can't make the... So we're going to make it a downside so it's a plus one, minus one. And then ship it. We're not going to playtest this. We're just going to say it's good. They wow. didn't playtest it after they made it. But the same thing happened to Rancor, right? Like, yeah. they were like, oh, make it a... It's a two mana card. It, oh, no, Rancor is supposed to be three mana. Two and a green. Yeah, two and a green, but they left the two off. Mm -hmm. That was actually a, pr a printing error. Yeah. And like... Uh, yeah, so there's it's sort of like the the final crown jewel of all of these like play test design mistakes. Like, I wonder if anybody who Wizards of the Coast actually played with this card and realized how miserable it was. 
Um, because it like if you're in green blue, if you're in any amount of green or they blue, were probably like they were probably like, oh, uh, we need to make it big so that it lives through questing beast. Well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Good news. That's probably it, what it is. Like they were just playing all these games of limited with it. And they're like, nobody's going to play with this. It just makes food. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but, but like if, if they did play test it, then they would have been like, okay, well they resolve their questing beast. It's still going to live. And then they're going to turn the questing beast into a three, three. And, and then they also get to cast cards on their turn. Like this isn't <laughs> the last card that you're playing in a game. You're playing this and then continuing and like it's so messed up because it's three mana, including a green. So obviously you're in green, so like mana dorks exist. You're probably like if you have this in your opener with a mana dork, it's coming down turn two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you get to turn your mana dork into a three three. Let's go. Yeah. Or or if they have no pressure on you, you're just like, okay, make a food. Pass. Okay, next turn. Turn that food into a three three. Attack you for a four. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, it's one of the most frustrating. It is obvious. It's the obvious best planeswalker, right? Yeah. Yes, and I mean, I think that Oko and Minsk and Boo are pretty close. Um, but Oko or but uh, Minsk and Boo is like, it's it, it, it's very it's very powerful up front, and Oko mm-hmm. is just like really annoying, mm-hmm. like abs- absurdly an absurd amount of lo- loyalty and just very, very hard to kill and just yep. gets, gets to keep making three threes. Yeah. That's it, it's sort of the game plan on its own. Mm-hmm. It, it's all it's, it's the full, it's the full game plan in a box, mm-hmm. which, which is the same for Minskin Boo. Minskin Boo is like a full game plan in a box. Yeah. Like you don't need to do anything else. Now. Mm-hmm. You can. And that's sort of messed up. Like you're in order to in order to keep parity and kill an Oko an un, okay an uncontested Oko your opponent mm-hmm. has to put your opponent has to put three power into play uh, on turn two and then mm-hmm. they have to put and then they have to put six more power into play on turn three yeah in order to kill this before they before you get to turn your food into a three three and block yes uh, otherwise going to- otherwise it just gets to live yeah. It's sort of absurd because like in any other, like the worst case scenario then is then they turn your six, six into a three, three. And you're like, Oh no. Like you've halved this six man. Like the card is not okay. It's not okay. Play it. Like, obviously play it. Uh, this is the one planeswalker that if they, if they tacked a point onto it, I'd understand. I'd be like, yes, I agree. And I know Wheeler's been like, pretty vocal about been like we're probably not going to point planeswalkers ever you know it's just not going to happen mm-hmm. this is well, the you one can't you, you can't really point him you you can't you can't really point at oko you can you could <laughs> but it, it's sort of like it, i don't know it like if they did if they pointed oko and they pointed minskin boo i'd be like okay yeah makes sense i like it wow <laughs> All right, that is our top three planeswalkers for Canadian Highlander. Oh yeah! And if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to the channel. And and in the comments, if we mess this up, if we totally got this wrong, we, if yeah, like this is these these are just our opinions. But we would also like to know your opinions. So let us know down in the comments section below what your favorite three planeswalkers and Canadian Highlander are. Why note is great. And, <laughs> and before we go, uh, I just want to remind you that we're, we're proud. proud of you. Bye. Later.